This is a soy free chicken, free range. And I think we've had a few people ask for like a, a little prep video, so just gonna go away and just show you how I would normally take apart a chicken. Lots of different ways to do it. I usually, I usually just start from the breastbone and slice all the way down. Follow the rib cage all the way around. And then when you get to this stage, try and take a little bit of this skin from the thigh. Again, on the other side, I can show you. Start at the top, work your way down. You sort of come around this natural wishbone and then it's easier from this way to flip it. Now I'm just going down with my knife, just keeping really close to that bone, open it up and then flip it back, take that. And then this little section down here, like I said, release a tiny little bit of that and just take your knife, go all the way down. So you, there you've got your two breasts. Now some people leave this little nubbin on here at the top, so I, I just take that right off. And then you've got your wing, okay? Now, super simple. Most people miss this bit, but this is the crown jewel of your chicken, and it's the oyster. This is the bit that the piece, person who's carving the bird always steals. But see, what I've done is I've broken that leg joint, and you can see this little puck of meat here. And then it's so, so simple. You just follow your knife around, take it off at the bottom. And then you can see from the bird, you've got the bulk of your thigh, your leg, and then this here is the oyster. That is chef's favorite part. Chicken oysters, succulent meat. So, you've got a natural bone in the middle of that thigh. And you can see we've taken that skin off, but that thigh is still completely nicely covered. There we go. Off. Joint there, just goes straight through. Easy peasy. And then there, we've got another beautiful little thigh. Parsons nose. I always chuck that in the pan when I'm cooking things. And then you've got this neck muscle. If you're making a really nice sauce, the more you separate these bones to do the roasting, the better. Two chicken breasts, two chicken wings, two oysters, beautiful legs, and the thighs. I think we'll just cook off one of these beautiful little chicken breasts. Render out this into the pan. Tiny splash of oil. So we've had a lot of complaints on the YouTube channel that no one can see my beautiful face. So I'll uh, strap this on so you can see my, uh, my beautiful mug whilst I cook these uh, dishes for you. I'm just going to lay that chicken breast down. Okay. Now with the chicken, it's, it's a very, very different to cooking a piece of beef. You really want to cook it at slow sort of shimmering fry. You really don't want to nail it because you'll burn that chicken before you cook the whole breast through. The more contact you get, the better. I'm just gonna rest that pan on there. It might seem quite aggr aggressive, that heat, but actually it's something that covers up the whole chicken breast. It kind of almost makes it steam. Oh! Excellent. Probably leave that wait now for a little bit, now that you've got that initial crust developing. Now to make a simple sauce with it. It's a really simple white wine and cream sauce. Chicken bacon. Nothing crazy. We're gonna just go in with a whole garlic clove. It's super easy, keep it simple. And we're actually gonna take that out as well later. Brunoise of shallot. Go translucent nice and easily. Just check our chicken quickly. So there we go, crispy chicken breast. But I think we can go even further than that on the crisp before we start to think about putting in any butter into there. Uh, garlic clove in there. And after about, it's probably gonna take at least 10 minutes to cook the entire uh, chicken. And, and just like with steak, um, you don't quite need to rest white meat the same as you would red meat. After about, about 60 degrees, the cells start to break and the moisture starts to just evaporate into the sauce. All right, so we are getting there on that skin. We're gonna add our bacon. We want that to get super, super crispy. Take out any of your little giblets. Butter goes in. Sometimes people don't realize it, but butter actually, uh, it's got milk solids in it. So if you've got anything that's stuck on the bottom of your pan, 
you can almost deglaze it with butter. So you're deglazing the flavor of that pan all over to that crispy bacon. Picking a tiny bit of time, time goes in. So we've got that bacon sort of starting to crisp up now. Chicken's looking beautiful. Just start to baste that slowly. If you've got Madeira, if you've got some brandy, if you've got some beautiful mushrooms, you can pretty much get creative with this and do this with anything. Tiny bit of butter on there. Take out your uh, caramelized garlic clove. Absolute beautiful flavor to start the next stage, which is the sauce. Let's go in there with our shallots. Again, there's a little bit of liquid in the shallots as well, so that can help to deglaze the pan. Don't get too much color on them. You just want them to go translucent. Deglaze this pan. A little bit of white wine. Try and reduce the wine until it's like almost like a syrupy consistency. So that gets rid of a lot of that kind of um, bitterness that you get and it just converts that all into sugars. Fresh veal stock. You use a stock cube, just literally whack a stock cube in there. Tiny, tiny touch of stock. But there's natural gelatin that goes into a lot of stocks. That adds a really nice mouthfeel to the sauce. Reduce that brown stock. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of um, whipping cream. We always use whipping cream in the in the restaurant, it's lighter than double cream. What we're just going to do now is just turn up that heat. The cream adds um, a little bit of sweetness to the sauce as well. So the wine adds sweetness, cream adds a touch of sweetness, shallots add a bit of sweetness. Often means you can get a little bit more bacon, salt, umami into the sauce. Nice bit of uh, freshly ground pepper. Good amount of nice, hot French Dijon. Take it off the heat. Your natural instinct is to, is to go like this. But you can't see the lemon. So you always have to check how, how, how well you've done on seeing the lemon. So the best thing to do is just go from top to bottom. I always use one of these like microphones. Touch of lemon juice. Acidity from the lemon juice, just rounding off all that sweetness and that umami. And that's it, that's a really, really simple mustard cream sauce. Tiny bit off the side. Meat. You serve it up like that. Get that for your wife's dinner on a Wednesday night. I'll tell you what. Easy peasy. Sweet, so I just finished that with a little tiny, tiny touch of mold and salt. Easy peasy. Took about 25 minutes. I've got to address the elephant in the room. Just last week I made a video about Guga and um, about cooking the steaks. And I referenced the fact that Guga does, does not flip his steaks. I was sorely mistaken and I apologize for any of the hurt caused by this remark. I can only humbly apologise to Guga and his devout fans for any upset that I've caused. Like and subscribe. Handy tips and tricks. <laughs>